catches her and beats her to death in the living room. Okay, everybody, this is Mooney Dashcam. Today, we are in Hempstead, Long Island. We're going to be talking about the Bobby Vanderhall murders. He had a psychotic break, went back home to murder his mother and sister, but those were not the only people there. I'll give you all the details on the drive there. We're gonna go to the house where it all happened. So let's flip this around and get into it. Technically, we are starting in Garden City. This incident happened in 2017. The address that we're going to is 125 Perry Street in Hempstead. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I post in there pretty much every single day. Any crime scene photos that can't go on YouTube end up on the Instagram, so go check that out. Don't forget to leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. I very much appreciate that. Again, a lot of inspiration that way. And also hit the notification bell so you guys can see exactly when I post a new video. Okay, let's get into it. So the person we're talking about today is Bobby Vanderhall, a 34-year-old big human six foot plus 235 pounds bobby always suffered from mental health problems he was on medication for years according to his attorney he is schizophrenic and possibly not on the correct medication at the time he was hospitalized two times for emotional issues and this would not be his first time getting in trouble in 2003 he got a dwi and in 2015, he was arrested for forcibly touching a woman. He was living with his mother at 123 Perry Street, and eventually his behavior became too much for his mother to handle. His mother is 59-year-old Lynn Vanderhall. He was getting increasingly aggressive and erratic. He physically harassed her and slapped her. So in March of 2017, she kicked him out of the house and she got an order of protection against him. In the time that he was out of the house, he was homeless. I believe he was sleeping in his car. And all that time, his anger is growing for his mother and his sister. Um, there's no reports of really what his sister may have done, but I'm sure he wasn't the greatest to her either when he was having his emotional outbursts. So, on August 12th, 2017, at 1.15 a.m., he comes back to the house trying to get in the door, and he realizes that he's locked out. So that, of course, gets him very frustrated. He goes into the garage, which I guess maybe was open or unlocked, and gets a large framing hammer. Goes to the basement door, and in a fit of rage, breaks down the basement door getting inside with that hammer. He then makes his way upstairs to where his mother was hanging out. I would assume at this point the mother knew something was not right, considering that he broke down the basement door with the hammer. She must have heard that. So he comes upstairs with the hammer in hand and catches her and beats her to death in the living room. I also heard reports that it was in the kitchen, but I heard more that it was in the living room, so we'll go with that. As this happens, I'm sure it wasn't a quiet situation. I would assume there were some sounds of struggling, maybe some yelling. Normal, if someone is beating with a hammer, and if you are beating someone with a hammer, I would guess. So I guess he looks around for the sister, realizes she's not on the first floor, and starts to head up to the second floor to find her. Right as that happens, she's coming down to help the mother because she heard the screams with a friend candace murray bobby starts to attack candace right away she fights back just enough to be able to escape and she runs away outside as he kills his sister 29 year old melissa vanderhold as this is going on melissa's other friend 29 year old janelle simpson is in a room alone, probably hearing all of this happen. Terrified. And she was a childhood friend, so she definitely knows who Bobby is and what he's about and how big and strong he is. So like I said, Candace made it outside. She is covered in blood and barefoot. She runs into the street in front of a neighbor's car who's coming home from a movie at 1.20 a.m. So he enters the house at 1.15, she ends up running out of the house screaming at 1.20. So this all happened pretty quickly. The neighbor is Earl Sykes, a 38-year-old. 
she gets in front of the car and she's screaming. In his words, she kept saying, he's trying to kill us, he's trying to kill us. Saying his whole name as she did that. Also screaming, help me. And then he, of course, calls 911 right away. Then Bobby entered the room with Janelle Simpson and killed her as well. After having to hear all that chaos going on in the house, she gets killed in the same way. After police arrive at 2.15 a.m., the three inside the house are confirmed dead from blunt force trauma. I'm assuming they were realized they were dead before that, but that's just the time that everything was confirmed because the, the call was made at about 1.20, so it shouldn't have taken that long. Candace ended up in the hospital with defensive wounds, a fractured wrist, and contusions from the hammer. She was in stable condition. He was caught two miles away, peacefully sleeping in his car. He didn't intend to kill anybody besides the mother and the sister, but the friends happened to be there. They were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Relatives were seen on the news crying outside the house. As there were still bloody handprints visible on the house. Maybe on the inside of the windows. I'm not exactly sure where the handprints may have been. Alright, we're on the block now. It's a pretty tight block. And when I pulled up before... It looked like it was a full house, which I don't love to exactly film houses while people are inside. I don't love to film houses in general, but I do it for you guys. So this is the block where this all went down. It's that house right over there. As you can imagine, the friend Candace running out to the street, stopping the car right here, close to the middle of the night. Right there, that house. Pretty crazy to think what horrible things could have happened there. It's just a totally normal house now. See, very quiet block. So this is the house where he broke down the back door, came up from the basement, killed the mother, the sister, and the friend. The friend runs into the street and calls for help. Stop the car. One last thing. Alright, keep on walking. So, I don't know why it took so long, but five years later, February 18th, 2022, he was sentenced to 50 years to life for these crimes. Three counts of second degree murder and one count of attempted murder. Let's get in the truck finish off the rest of the story. It always feels weird in cases of murder like this, where you say, oh, the guy had mental health problems. Usually people that murder people have mental health problems. It's like whenever we hear about another school shooting or mass shooting, like, he struggled with mental health. Yes, you need to have mental health problems to kill a bunch of people or murder one person. But he's a schizophrenic, it is part of the story. And like his attorney said, he may not have been on the right medications to keep his aggression down, which seemed like that was the main problem here. He pled guilty. He took the blame for the crimes. It wasn't like he tried to get out of it in any type of way, plead insanity. It seems like he knew what he did and got his time, of course. It's obviously terrible that something like this happened, that a son could have such problems that he thinks that he has to go back to the house and murder his family to, I don't know, give himself some sort of resolution. Obviously, he was in the right state of mind. I don't know if anyone that murders people like this is in the right state of mind. I'm surprised to didn't hear about this situation when it actually went on. It was 2017, not too long ago. 
didn't hear anything about it. Seems like a crazy enough story that it would get more news attention. Maybe you guys have heard about it on the news and I just missed it, who knows. But I think that's everything I have to tell you about this situation. And I'll see you in the next one.